We're here at TM Forums Management World in Dublin and one of the great features each year is Forumville where a number of companies get together to produce catalysts. These are things looking into the future, they're applications and services that we can see and use among service providers. One feature this year is this particular area here about the service delivery broker where over the top service demand can be converted into CSP revenue opportunities. It's a joint project championed by Portugal Telecom and is well worth seeing. The Service Delivery Broker Catalyst is a joint effort of Telcordia, Microsoft, and Portugal Telecom uh, Sapo. We're really looking at some of the fundamental monetization challenges, but more than that, opportunities facing the industry as we move from traditional telecommunications to a distributed cloud, distributed web, and distributed IP applications. What we're seeing is that innovation, in many cases, is taking place in development communities on the web, and time to market is becoming a bigger and bigger challenge for the telcos. The question is, how can they monetize that? And how can they become part of those de development communities? And how can we have our revenues rise commensurate with the growth of services? This brings us to the limitation of current practice and what's really happening today and why we haven't been more successful. Many companies have put up development communities, developed APIs, and yet we have not seen the take-up of this that we might have hoped for. The three companies involved in this catalyst believe this really is not any uh, problem with the fundamental idea of collaborative ecosystems, but one of how it's been implemented. So we're looking to take away some of the fundamental problems. We're seeing that in many cases the APIs are too simple and the services exposed too few. What we need to build in a service delivery broker is a solution that enables one to expose services in a very efficient manner. And at the same time, provide the tooling and uh, governance models necessary for a developer to utilize those services and create applications very, very efficiently to enable new services to be rolled out in a very, very short period of time without having to waste a lot of time and effort on unnecessary integration issues that can be handled effectively by the service delivery broker. The solution has three main components. The service delivery broker runtime, the service delivery broker support application, and the service delivery broker marketplace. The service delivery broker support application is the support for managing the whole services lifecycle phases. From concept until retirement, the service delivery broker runtime addresses most of 60 to 70% of development effort found on every project. For IPTV application, for example, two developers in two weeks will be able to deliver a new application. Given that, we see one more problem. Applications are naturally becoming distributed across the cloud, and we need to manage them, and we need to be able to monetize them across multiple segments. What we see is that we want to have a solution that addresses multiple devices, multiple operating systems, multiple programming languages. We don't want to restrict the developer to just one programming language. And we assume that there are multiple clouds. Therefore, we want to be able to expose services that exist in multiple clouds. We want to have a common development environment across all of those clouds. We want to be able to invoke uh, the breadth developer, the, uh, the leverage the developers from the Microsoft developer network, um, and, you, and have all of them able to build services that can be deployed either onto marketplaces or deployed as cloud applications. The Service Delivery Broker Marketplace is an application specifically designed to be able to expose business models as a service. So through an activity of a product manager, it will be able, using a wizard-like experience, to deliver a new web service API to the marketplace. And finally, we're seeing the business model not being as flexible as need to be. This is in ways of separating revenues, uh, pricing options, etc. The service delivery broker business models are flexible enough to have different propositions of value to different market segments. The first proposition, the most obvious, will be to have a service orientation project on premises for a company where they can organize their network and infrastructure assets and resources and expose them through web services. 
From this proposition, they can start delivering the same platform as a service to third parties, to SMEs, and enabling them to use a cloud service, so the service delivery broker can be exposed as a cloud service itself, so they will have a different business model for them. In a third facet, the service delivery broker can be exposed to enable third parties business models like a revenue sharing of APIs consumption. So for instance, if a developer makes an application using an API that is exposed through the service delivery broker, then a consumer of that application can be charged, charged for the consume of this, that application and then the developer gets its revenue sharing from the service provider. I'd like to run through some live demonstrations to illustrate the service delivery broker catalyst in action. And I have a few points that I think are very important to you. The first is these are true live services that you're going to see showing that this system distributed over the cloud is interoperating. But more importantly, what we want to show is a, a viable business model and the revenue that it enables. And so in each and every one of these, the scenario has an over-the-top deliverer of premium video. Think premium movies. And they believe that their business is potentially in jeopardy if mobile broadband plans don't necessarily support the quality needed for a good consumer experience or a quota or a pricing plan that makes it uneconomic. And so what we're going to show is various ways that they can interact with the telco underneath, improve the quality, provide reverse charging, and overall eliminate, eliminate obstacles to their business, thereby making more money, and more importantly to our industry, allowing us to participate in the revenue stream. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and launch my favorite video application. And I have the option, as Graham mentioned, to choose a high def, a standard def, or a low def. I'm a bronze level subscriber, so typically I would only be able to view the low def version, but what I can do is temporarily boost my bandwidth, as Grant said. And uh, for $2 for this film, I can boost my bandwidth, watch the gold level movie, and I'm going to go ahead and watch it. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, all the billing's taken care of for me. Some of the money goes to the video provider, some goes to the uh, operator, and I can go ahead and uh, watch the film that I've been looking forward to. And as the film begins to play, let's just summarize what a couple of the key things are here. Jim got, first of all, he got choices. He got a better video experience. The video provider got to sell a movie at a higher price than they could have done otherwise, and the telco got additional revenue out of it. Our industry, the communication industry, participated in the revenue from more over-the-top sales. Everybody's happy, it's a good model. Okay, so we're now going to see a second technology and business scenario. The same actors are in this, the same desire for a consumer to watch a movie that doesn't quite fit in her plan. But rather than using real-time network protocols to boost the speed for one session and charging appropriately, we're going to show a totally different scenario here. So Elaine, can you take us through how that might look to the consumer? Sure. So as the consumer, I have my Android device here, and I'm going to click on our, our video application. And the video application lists out um, a choice of movies that I can view. And then I have choices of either download the movie or stream the movie. And in this case, I'm going to stream the movie. When I hit stream, it returns a message saying, sorry, your current plan does not support streaming. Would you like to upgrade now? So what happened here is the, the video application went back to the network to look at the consumer's plan, existing plan, and determined that there wasn't enough um, bandwidth in order to support streaming on this device. So the customer is going to say, yes, I would love to um, upgrade to a new plan. And after looking down at the, uh, the catalog that's on the service, service provider side, the catalog has returned choices of offerings that this customer can purchase in order to upgrade their service as an upsell. The video application provider displays it on their uh, device and you can get information about each of these plans and determine which one best fits. So the consumer chooses uh, video 2 gig, gigabyte gold for $25.99. I select buy and then the movie will stream on my um, Android device.
and now they're streaming their, their movie. So what's effectively happened is the over-the-top vendor, the video application, has been given the capability to upsell a plan that is a telco plan, a telecommunications provider plan, and been able to make their consumer happy and the revenues flow back to both the video application provider and the telco. And so what we've really seen here is two different ways for both the telco and over-the-top providers to make more money. What I think is particularly nice about this plan and, and the other one as well is that providers can be very aggressive to grow their market with lower priced uh, plans and yet get additional revenue as consumers take up more services and use the network more intensively. Um, we have three or four more uh, examples of this. We're not going to run through them on film, but we love to show them to people in, the, in our lab. And what it really shows is there are almost infinite business possibilities and technology possibilities that have been made possible by this kind of an architecture. So uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing them. So both the challenge and the opportunity as we see it is rather than bring outside developers and hope that they come to our development communities and our APIs, to take all of the rich resources that are available in telcos, in networks, in OSS, BSS, in private clouds, and expose them into an innovation environment that is native to all of the developers, tens of millions of developers around the world. This way, we all profit from innovation.